Welcome, welcome everyone to Unhinged with the Door Dork, where door hardware nerds get together. We slam and we knock on different door fills. Um, we learn, we laugh, and sometimes we cry because we are laughing, and sometimes we're crying because of the fells. But uh, most importantly, we have fun uh, while we learn and dork about doors. Um, today, we have a very special guest, uh, Mr. Ben Williams, um, Director of Product Management at the uh, Electric Mechanical Solutions. I'll let him give a little intro and Ben, just tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do. Sure, uh, so Benjamin Williams, I've been with the group for about 13 years to give you guys an idea. So I've done everything from turn a wrench in the field to work with the specification team. And now I have the privilege of being part of the great product management team. Uh, we're responsible in Phoenix for brands like HES, Securitron, Adams Right Alarm Controls. And more recently, we've added a life safety power to our offering as part of our family as well some great industry standards there. Like everyone in the industry knows HES, Securitron, right? The utility brands, if you will, for the things when you can't find other products to solve them, they tend to turn to our products to try and figure out more creative ways when you can't find an out of the box type of vanilla way to do it, if you will. I like that, I like that. And a great name, by the way, right? You never meet a bad guy named Ben. <laughs> <laughs> so true. And uh, as always, you know her, you love her. We've got Mia Merrill. Um, you want to jump on and say hi, Mia. Hello, hello. Welcome back uh, to another great episode of Unhinged. I'm sure Benji has some wonderful pictures in store for us today. Uh, I do. And they are actually uh, specially tailored to our special guests. So um, it, it'll make sense once I uh, throw them up on the board. But uh, for those who don't know how Unhinged works, uh, I pop up a picture. Um, we knock and we slam on the door and uh, throw out any helpful tips. And uh, then we give it a knocking score. So uh, one being not too knocking bad and 10 being pretty knocking bad. Like that is a bad door and should be taken care of immediately, right? <laughs> um, you guys ready? I'll share my screen. Yeah. Okay, let's jump in. Hmm. This one kind of hits you in layers. Initial initial thoughts, me and Ben. Yeah, I, I wish I could say that this was one that uh, I don't see all the time, but I think this reinforces. And Benji, I know you play in some of the the same uh, social media forums that I sit on as well. I mean, aluminum storefront just in general continues to be one of the most talked about areas and how to retrofit and upgrade right now with everything people are going through. I think the simple answer is I I wish I could be super critical right off the the get go, but this is reality, right? Uh, whether it's trying to do a, a narrow style frame or doing a double door application like this, which is really what I would knock on them is if we don't know if the secondary leaf is fixed, that's my first blush. Uh, how is the strike supposed to work correctly to begin with anyway? Um, but regardless, it's it's really after that would be things like egress and code requirements for, for where ADA heights and things like that are included for like paddles for egress and whatnot that comes to mind. Um, one thing that caught my eye was the... Uh latch guard on the inside of the frame. I, I believe that's probably used as a door pull. Um, so maybe these are on pivots uh, or I'm not sure uh, how that would work or why that is there. Or maybe the frame was damaged and they're using that to like cover it up. Um, and then uh, we've got the upside down cylinder with the unmatched finish. There's, there's a lot to call out on this uh, opening. Well, I think the upside down cylinder just kind of, kind of gives it a Euro feel. <laughs> it's, 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 it's a French market. It's a, <laughs> exactly. Is that up, upside down, not backwards. <laughs> and, you know, split finishes is becoming a thing nowadays. So I think maybe this is hip. Maybe it's ahead of its time. It's a uh, art deco, right? Someone said that about one of my posts the other day. <laughs> <laughs> We're a homing beacon for the key. One of the two. Okay. Let's give it a knocking score. Unless there's any other comments. What do you guys think? How how knocking bad is it? I think it's probably like a seven. I, I would agree with that. There's no think, obvious code violations that we can tell. Uh, I would be concerned about life safety and certain applications, but I agree. Yeah, it's up there. I mean, for what it's worth, Benji, I mean, the, the part that I have to give a little bit of respect for is the, the strike install is relatively clean. They took the line, so there's not a bunch of hack job type of installs from what you can see on the frame of the door itself. So, I mean, there's some positives to it, but I think we've pointed out the obvious uh, obscurity of what it brings to the table outside of that. Okay, I'll jump on to the next one. Wow. This is telling you, check out here. 
check it out. Look, look at this. <laughs> this is about as good as when you see a keypad lock with the code posted right above the door. Yeah, with which Benji posts a lot of uh, <laughs> on social media. So every time I see it, every time I will share that because it is always funny. Always funny. Yeah, I mean, the sad part here, right, is is the fact that somebody found it easier. And this speaks to a lot of what we hear installers talk about all the time about the fear of blowing out a door if they try and core it to run a power transfer through. <laughs> but this is a wow, just wow. <laughs> so anytime I see a door loop, that is lower. I, I can't be the only kid that wants to like just yank on it a bit, right? Like that's the wow. I could see my my boys like, oh yeah, jungle gym. Let me climb up the wall on this, and uh, I'm sure that's not uh, meant to have kids uh, hanging on it, right? <laughs> the emergency well, pull string, if you will. Your kids are older than mine, but that's perfect toddler height. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, let's point out the fact it's not even a straight line from the way it looks from the picture, at least in the angle. So, I mean, somebody obviously doesn't know how to even use a level, let alone put the right color wire mold across the face of the door. So at least it blends in a little bit. Not not too knocking bad, but if you guys gave it a score, what would you say? I don't know. I, I think I would go back to another seven. I, I mean, just from practicality of the risk it exposes somebody to for something going wrong at the end of the day. Uh, I'm a little less, the electricity is a risk here, but other than just being egregiously ugly, um, I don't think there's a ton wrong, like code violation wise, but yes, there's some danger. There's a possibility of danger. Yeah, I'll say five. I mean, it is on the secure side of the door and like chances are people that are using it daily, they're not going to pull on it and there's not going to be random strangers, but check out here. I almost feel like that means that they're directing public traffic along this corridor, this hallway, or through this door. And uh, that's what concerns me is the uh, public liability that comes with this. This yeah. looks like a dentist office or maybe a doctor's office. Like when you get done sitting in the seat and you go to schedule your follow-up appointment kind of a thing. Let's jump on into the last picture. Um, this one's a doozy. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.